Hey there. So, we recently posted on our community tab, and we asked you guys what kind of content you like to see from us. And you overwhelmingly chose devlogs, so here's another devlog for you. Um, also, make sure you subscribe, like 10% of you are subscribed. You probably see our videos and you're recommended, because we only post like every month, and then you probably see it and you're like, oh wow, I'm probably subscribed to you. You probably aren't, so hit the subscribe button, because that'll make us want to make more videos. Bye. So our last flight went really well, um, we were really happy with how the ascent went. We didn't deviate more than two degrees from each axis, so we were really happy with how that went. From there, we had to move on to get things ready for this flight. So basically, for the last six weeks, every weekend, we've been meeting up in this cold garage, putting on the same playlist that's like eight hours long, and just working for the entire eight hours on the rocket to get everything ready for this test. So, now that we know that Inside can fly and control itself on ascent, we need to be capable of holding two motors at once. We'll get to why that's important later. That aside, we need to redesign the TVC mount to be able to hold both motors. So, Jonah came up to me and said, here's two E-motors, how can we stack them? So, where did I get my inspiration? Well, maybe SpaceX? Maybe Formula One cars? No. The G2 pen. So the way that the pen works is genius. You can push it down and click it in, and well, it holds the pen out, and then once you click it again, the pen releases. And this is exactly what we need inside to do, so that we can ignite a first motor, and then once it burns out, it will be pushed away from the vehicle and fall away freely. The reason why I think this design is so good is because it's entirely passive. It uses the thrust of the motor to prime the ejection, and then passively pushes itself down once the motor burns out. So let's transition from hardware over to software. Um, after our last flight, we were really happy with how everything controlled, but there were some minor improvements that we felt that we could make. Um, so we added in the functionality so that when the first motor burns out, it can smoothly transition into the second motor gains. Now that we talked about software, let's transition over to the Stereo Pi. What is the Stereo Pi? It is basically an open source project that allows you to take dual camera footage and process it in real time on a Raspberry Pi. It is very, very cool. Our rocket runs an entire desktop. You can plug in a keyboard and mouse. You can play Minecraft on it, all on our rocket. It's pretty cool. You might also wonder, why cameras? I, none of this is practical. It's a rocket, it's a small rocket with a TVC in it. Did you think this was an actual solution for anything? Um, but actually the cameras are pretty good. GPS, GSN, G, G, GNSS, GPSS, <laughs> are really expensive and they're kind of a slow refresh. Um, this isn't exactly cheap, but what it does do is give us really accurate depth and translation information. In order to call this test a success, we wanted to meet three criteria. The first was to prove that we can eject that first motor and then ignite the second one in a quick enough period of time that we can keep flying. The second one was to get that camera data back so that we can start to develop our tracking software. And the third was to make sure that that vertical Kalman filter is working and uh, tracks our altitude very closely. Yeah. Basically, we wanted to make sure that we could compare our camera tracking um, after the fact with our vertical Kalman filter and make sure that the camera tracking is actually doing a really good job based on what we see. And then we'll fuse them all together and uh, it'll all be cool. Anyway, we've done a lot of talking. I think it's time to launch. Time to fly. Time to fly. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh.
Oh my days. Hey, it was, really a, cool. it was a, it, dude, it was such a good flight. It was really good. I I hope people appreciate how crisp it was. Might that thing was best, upright. Best TVC flight ever. I don't know if I'd go that far. So if you're used to seeing normal model rockets fly, this does not look like a good flight. I mean, it, it went up like 15 feet and then fell hard on the ground. It's not what you expect to be a good flight. We actually met a couple people on launch day who were very confused as to what was going on. For a TVC rocket, this was a really good flight. Um, we actually dealt with some suboptimal conditions. You can see in the video, the smoke comes out of the motor and immediately gets blown by the breeze. Um, the rocket did a good job accounting for not only this, but also the roll that was induced by it. We stayed within five degrees. Now, you might also wonder, why aren't you launching on bigger motors? Where are all the F motors? We can't find F motors. E motors are really easy for us to get. They're really accessible, they're cheap, and it means we can test really often. And so we like them. We're gonna try to do our future tests using these too. That's great. Have a great day. <laughs> this test marks the beginning of Insight's landing phase. This phase will entail a variety of tests where we do more double ascents such as this, as well as transitioning into ascents and then landing tests. We'll be getting rid of the shoot ejection system. I know this sounds radical, but we really don't go that high. We go to about five meters and we have a safe enough area that whatever happens will not harm anyone or put anyone in danger, as, as well as the vehicle. The vehicle will not be hurt at this altitude. Placing that system for a roll control system, a reaction wheel system. Um, it's not an original idea, but it works well and it works for our purposes. We're able to get dual camera footage back from the test, which is very exciting. Our next steps now to introduce it into the loop is to use some computer vision, some algorithms, things like SLAM. We want to open source all of this. Um, if anyone else is as crazy and stupid as us to put two cameras on the bottom of your rocket, you can do it. Help support us by committing to the GitHub, and if you can build a better algorithm, one that tracks better than us, go for it. We're going to upload the footage and all of the flight data from there on the GitHub, and you can see if you can create a SLAM algorithm. If you guys are lucky, we might also order a custom set of Orion Aerospace merch, which we'll give away to people on our Discord, as well as someone who helps us out with the Rocket Slam. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Or forget. Or forget. Don't forget. Or don't. Don't forget.